Hey everybody, my name is Sasha and I'm a developer advocate here at Trilitech. Today we're going to work through a very basic introduction to SmartPy, one of the high level smart contract languages for the Tezos blockchain. We're going to write a contract, we're going to originate that contract onto a testnet, and we're actually going to interact with that contract on chain using a block explorer. So to get started, head over to smartpy.io and on the front page here, you'll see this button called online IDE. And once we're here, you'll probably see some different code on the left here. If you head over to the link in the description below, Below, there'll be a Tezos docs link, which will explain exactly what code you need to copy and paste into this left part here. So starting on line one, we're importing SmartPy as SP. So from now on, if you see SP, that means we're hooking into the SmartPy library, for example, here on line five. On line three, and by the way, if you want to go read about this, you can please go head over to smartpy.io. They've got excellent docs explaining getting started. This sp.module is really where the contract is defined under the main function, which is this uh, main function on line four. Here is a class being instantiated on line five and it's called store greeting. So that actually is the name of our contract. How do you know it's a contract? Well, it takes this object that we've hooked in from the SmartPy library, sp.contract. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna walk you through and really explain the basic functionality of the smart contract. So as I mentioned on line five, we have the store greeting, which is the name of the contract. Here on line six, we have the constructor. The constructor is an important part of any smart contract. In this case, what happens is when you first originate that smart contract on chain, you can set up some initial values to say you're storing some text or maybe some parameters or something like that. In this case, passing through a greeting, right? Because the idea of the contract is to store a greeting, which so makes sense. And we're actually storing that greeting because you see it's referred to here again on line seven in self.data.greeting. So self.data is where the storage values are mapped. So in this case, we're actually assigning the parameter greeting. So anything that's passed through in the constructor will be assigned as greeting. And we're storing that in the contract storage under greeting as well. So that makes sense. Jumping forward to line nine, and you also see a similar case on line 13, we can see sp.entrypoint. An entry point is a method, so a function that you can call on your contract on chain and read storage values, set storage values, return data, whatever you'd like. So in this case, we have two entry points, one called replace and one called append. Notice that they also take some parameters. We're gonna get the text from the parameters. So we're actually gonna pass through some text and you access that text with params.txt and replace is going to replace the greeting. In this case, we want to actually take the whole storage value of greeting within the contract self.data.greeting and actually just overwrite it. So this is just a straight equals with whatever text is passed through to the replace entry point. On line 13, the entry point is slightly different. In this case, we have an entry point called append. This is just going to append any text that you pass through in params. Remember, we're accessing that as params.txt. And we're actually going to append to a greeting. So for example, if your greeting is hello there, and you call the append entry point with and goodbye, your greeting that is now stored within your smart contract will be hello there and goodbye. And that's it for the smart contract. It's super basic. We have a constructor and we have two entry points. Now, if we look at line 17, you'll see some SmartPy specific syntax to do with testing and scenarios. In this case, we're going to define a test function and actually tell it that the main scenario that we want is for the contract to be run from the main function, as we see here. And actually, we're going to access the store greeting contract on line 20. Once that's accessed, we can actually go ahead and instantiate the contract using main.storeGreeting because now that is accessible. And we're actually going to pass through hello. Now, where is that hello pass through? Well, in this case, this is the constructor. So we are actually passing that through to the init because this is the first time the contract is going to be instantiated. It runs the constructor. On line 23 here, we're adding the contract to the scenario. And we're also going to go ahead and run a test verifying that the scenario has the correct contract initial value of hello. Once that passes, we're now going to call some entry points in our test. We're going to say, let's replace the greeting of hello with hi on line 27 here. And then on line 28, we're going to append the text with comma space there. So you can now go ahead and understand line 29 pretty easily. We're going to verify that these have worked. Remember that we started with hello, we replaced it with hi, and now we're adding there. So to verify the final state of this greeting stored on the contract, we need to check if it's now equal to hi there. All right, once that's ready, you can go ahead and press play up here, or as you can see, hit control enter or command enter, and it's going to run through the test scenario. It's going to compile the contract and run through the test scenarios that we wrote here in SmartPy syntax. So first things first, let's have a look at what we can see on this side. First, we can see that the replace method was run with the text high, seems to be successful, transaction okay. Also, the test scenario ran through the append function, which is correct. We appended the comma slash there. We also verified at the end that it is in fact equal to high there. So by the looks of it, everything ran successfully. We see two okays, everything is good. Let's go ahead and click click deploy Mikkelsen contract. This is going to give you a tab with some information we've seen before. And actually this will allow us to originate or in this case deploy 
uh, a Mickelson contract. Why is it Mickelson? And when we were writing in SmartPy, all smart, high level smart contract languages compiled down to Mickelson. And if you're interested in Mickelson, you can go check out Claude's intro to Mickelson series down below. There'll be a link in the description and Claude walks you through writing smart contracts in Mickelson and all the gory details of the low level language for the Tezos system. So I'm going to go ahead and click deploy Mickelson contract. It's going to take me to another page. Now you're going to need a Tezos wallet for this. I'm going to use Temple for the example. I'm going to connect to GhostNet. I'm just going to check it's okay. Just going to run view node data. Some block number here looks good. And I'm going to select an account. I'm going to click Temple and here's Sasha.tez and we're going to connect to the RPC that uh, SmartPy provides. And I'm going to click Connect and it's going to see here's, I already have Faucet money, so I already have Testnet, Tez. If you don't already, you can go ahead and click here to access the Faucet and click Validate. Now down below, this is a very important point. If you do not click Estimate Cost from RPC, it can be a little slow or actually not deploy your contract. In this case, make sure you click it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Deploy Contract. All of this stuff is advanced stuff, of course. And once you learn more, you of course, Feel free to check this all out. I'm just going to go ahead and click accept. This will pop up my wallet saying I have to sign something. And there we have it. The contract has originated successfully. And now the block confirmations are coming in. So my contract has indeed been originated on GhostNet. So actually, I'm going to go over to bettercall.dev and put the contract address in here. And here we have a few seconds ago, it was originated. We can check out what's stored, see that we have hello stored, which is great. And actually we're going to interact and see what we have here. So these are the two functions we wrote or the entry points. As you remember, we had replace and append, fantastic. If we want to replace and append, you can go ahead and type in whatever you'd like to replace it with. So in this case, let's replace it with hi. I'm gonna go ahead and click execute and I'm gonna click wallet, connect to my Tesos wallet with temple and I'm going to click confirm. This has been broadcast as a network. So we're going to give it, we're going to wait for a little bit with the magic of editing. And there we have it. Now it says hi. Perfect. Now for the final part of the video, let's check how the append works. So we're going to append. Remember we're appending onto the end of the string. So just to get the formatting correct, I'm going to do a comma space and put there like we had in the test scenario. Remember that test scenario was only run locally in SmartPy to check that everything would work. And now we're actually copying that test scenario and doing it live on GhostNet. Once again, I'm going to click execute with my wallet and I'm going to click confirm. And there we have it. Now the storage under greeting is stored as hi there. So that was going through a smart contract, very basic one written in SmartPy, actually originating it using the SmartPy IDE and checking it out in a block explorer and actually interacting with the entry points on chain, replacing and storing values. Next week, I'm going to run through a much more detailed introduction to SmartPy using a local environment. So for example, VS Code and the Octest client CLI to actually originate and do testing locally within your local dev environment and actually doing everything we did here, but setting up for a more advanced setup. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you very soon. Thanks and goodbye.